Hi, I'm Eric Burks. I'm the owner of Rich Own General Store here on Florida's Adventures Coast. Rich Own General Store was founded by my great uncle Sid Brinson in 1922. Um, it was founded when he moved the uh, store from Riverland, which is a community that used to be just down the road from here. He moved the building to here and that founded Rich Home General Store. Um, in 1928, it was robbed and burnt to the ground, and he built the building back, and this is the building from 1928. And it served as a general store and a post office for the community of Rich Home until 1936. After 1936, the, the building pretty much set vacant. Um, it had been ransacked and stuff. Uh, my father purchased the property from Uncle Sid in 1973. And, and then lived, moved to mobile home on the property and lived on the property. And he used the building as storage. Um, 2003, I purchased the property from my father. And 2016, done the undertaking of restoring the building and, and getting it added to the National Register of Historic Places and getting a historical marker. At the time, we, me and my wife, when we were rehabbing, refurbishing the building, we were looking at it and and you know every anybody can have a museum an old they can take an old store building put up a rope put some old artifacts on a shelf and not let you touch it and and even places charged to get in and see stuff like that and i thought it'd be a very unique museum if people could actually interact with the products and and uh, the tools and stuff of that time period everything we carry in the general store is time period to the 1920s and 1930s. Um, it may not have been in this store at that time, but it was available somewhere in the world at that time. My, my vision for the store was not to be just a museum for an old general store, but to be an actual museum for the community of Richland, um, which in 1900, this was a hustling and bustling community. Um, they were shipping out a train load of a railroad car train load of cucumbers a day out of here from the freight depot that, that used to sit on the property. I mean, this was a big farming community. So, and, and now we're down to, you know, four or five houses, population of 12. Our, our next project is, we have a photograph of what the property looked like in the 1930s, and we're going to build it tree for tree, building for building from that photograph and uh, rebuild the train depot it had a cucumber packing house, a, uh, a smokehouse, an ice house, and the plan is, is the museum will be free admission and we'll be smoking meats and you know, whatever kids are around that the time is pick up chicken eggs, we'll go pick up chicken eggs and just teach people um, what it was like to be in this community during that time period. And the kitchen is going to have a wood stove um, and we're going to have grandma in there cooking and it'll be a kind of like a potluck dinner. You'll come in for one price, you'll get all you can eat with dessert, and it'll be time period food cooked on an old wood stove. Um, and that will be, and, and go hand in hand with the museum. We do an annual event which celebrates the founding of the general store, which is last Saturday of June, our hoopla. Um, once the museum is built, then we're gonna start going to a monthly um, cane grinding and making cane serve. Alpo and, and John, that's the label there, and it's it was my father's barbecue sauce recipe, and it was always his vision to take it to market. So once he passed away, I uh, got a hold of the recipe and uh, and actually replicated it, and, and now we have it bottled. And out of his honor, took a picture of him riding his horse Alpo, um, which he'd actually purchased Alpo on from a meat wagon at the market, the horse on his way to be slaughtered, and that's the reason why he named him Alpo, because it's gonna be dog food. There used to be gas pumps that sit here, and they would do oil changes, service vehicles, and they would do their calculating, their figuring on the walls. And they uh, did, they wrote down an oil change here, it says September 26, 1931, oil change with the mileage. Doors are original to the building. Um, original post office window with the post office sign. It, not only was we a general store, but also served as a post office for the community until 1936. This is the this is the phone that would have been in a store this time period, and you would have picked it up. This would have 
uh, generated the electricity because they had a battery in here to ring up an operator. And the operator, you would have said, hey, I want to talk to Mr. Jones. So she would have taken a cord and connected you to Mr. Jones and you would, have, you would listen here and talk in here. And that's the way we made our phone calls. Of course, there wasn't a lot of phones in the community, so a lot of people would call the general store and leave messages for their, uh, for their family and members and stuff. And you can see on the wall where he left mess, he wrote messages down when people would call. And like here, he's got two short and a long was the Rich Long store ringer. A short, a long and a short was uh, for the Taylor family. So it's pretty neat. It's all original handwriting. The two of our most popular drinks are our Spricker's cream soda and root beer. And the reason they're so popular is because they're actually sweetened with honey from Rich Loam. The man that has the bees out here in the woods takes our honey back to Wisconsin and they use it in the drinks. So a little bit of Rich Loam is put into our sodas. We're uh, located on Rich Loam Clay St. Road. Um, we're a half mile off State Road 50, three miles from US 301. For more information, you can follow us on our Facebook page or go to our website. I hope you get a chance to come by and see Rich Loam General Store. <laughs>